Good morning. We are blessed here at Landis Homes with so many resident volunteers that help make so many things happen, including our Sunday morning services. So thank you to our greeters, uh, Dorcas and Diane. Thank you to Charlotte for that beautiful prelude for Park at the AV desk. We appreciate uh, we, we, so much. We couldn't make this happen without you. I am Chaplain Audrey Kanegi, and I want to welcome all the those who are watching here in person, those who are participating in East Bethany Chapel, a Welsh Mountain home, in your own homes, and I would like to give a special welcome to the residents gathered in Mannheim House this morning to participate in our worship together. It is good to be here. It is good to worship together. One of the purposes of gathering together to worship is to affirm our covenant relationship with God, to remember together that we are God's people. So I invite you to participate in the call to worship in your bulletin. I will read the leader part, and I will also lead you in reading the people part. <clears throat> Come, let us worship. For we are the people of God's pasture. Come, let us worship and bow down. For we are the sheep of God's hand. Come, let us worship and bow down before the Lord our maker. For the Lord is our God and God desires our worship. I invite Cheryl Martin to join me in leading us uh, in a time of worship in song. You can turn in your hymnal to number 16, God is here among us. What a beautiful truth. <laughs>
Our next song is 163, Obey My Voice. I'm not sure what all songs you know or have sung in the past. This may be a new one for you. Um, Charlotte's going to play it through for us first. But the reason that we are singing this song this morning is because it speaks of that covenant relationship with God. And you'll hear some of these words in our scripture text for this morning. It is a commitment. It, it expresses commitment of God to us and invites us to respond in that commitment, covenant relationship to God who, who pro, uh, provides for us. We can stand on his promises. Let's sing together. You can listen um, and then we'll sing. offering today is for Eastern Mennonite Missions. <clears throat> EMMM seeks to communicate the following. Christ's transforming love causes us to cross cultures, engage the world, and make disciples of Jesus. I served with YES and STAT teams when I was a young adult, and this was under EMM's Discipleship Ministries. This served to shape the direction of my life in future overseas mission services and helped me in my cross-cultural connections throughout the years. I was also privileged to serve on EMM's Christian Muslim Relations Team with David and Grace Shank several years ago. My husband, Steve, currently serves on the leadership team at EMM. 
So for the offering, please place your offering in the box next to the chaplain office across from the chapel or in campus mail. Please make the check out to Landis Homes. Let's pray. God, we are the sheep of your pasture. We seek to hear and obey your voice as we worship this morning and in our lives every day. Thank you, God, that you see our every need and provide for us as a caring shepherd. We now lift up those among us who may be ill or grieving losses or facing other challenges. Lord, please comfort those in need. May we depend on you as our source of joy and peace. Thank you, Lord God, for Easter Mennonite Mission's witness over the years and continuing to be led by your spirit. May this offering be a blessing to those who receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. This next song, I Bind My Heart This Tide, is it also a song of commitment, a commitment to following the way of Jesus, to imitating Jesus in our life, in the way we see the world. I was first introduced to this song on a trip to Israel. And after we had spent the day at the Sea of Galilee, we sang this together in the evening, and it was very, very meaningful. So I invite you to, as you sing, to listen to this invitation to bind our hearts to the way of Jesus. Our scripture this morning comes from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them out of Egypt. When I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds 
and I write and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. This morning, Lori Bench is here to share with us on these words from Jeremiah. Lori, as her role uh, as the mission team director at EMM, provides strategy and oversight, um, resourcing and partnering of EMM workers around the world. She's also grateful to rejoin EMM. She, like Cheryl, uh, served with uh, Youth Evangelism Service in Mexico and Russia. Um, besides seeing God changing lives around the world, she also enjoys spending time with her husband, Tim, and their three daughters. I had the privilege of being in youth evangelism service at the same time as Lori, and we shared a time of training mm-hmm. together in Baltimore. Um, so welcome, Lori. We look forward to hearing what God has put mm-hmm. on your heart. Good morning. I bring you greetings in Christ from EMM. It's always a pleasure to be with the Landis Homes community, knowing that so many of you have faithfully served with EMM, faithfully given, faithfully prayed over the years. Thank you. Today's passage is from Jeremiah, and it's a message of hope to a people who were in turmoil. Jeremiah's prophetic ministry took place in a hard time in Israel's history. He knew that the people were not obedient to the covenant with God. He called them to repentance and was largely unheeded. And yet this passage gives hope that there is a new future for God's people, that the day is surely coming, says Jeremiah, when God will bring forth a new covenant. Today, I want to invite us into fresh appreciation of that new covenant and the privilege that we have as being part of it. As we know, the old covenant was inaugurated on Mount Sinai with God's law written on tablets of stone. The new covenant that God promises, it's not completely different. It's the revised, updated, better version, and yet it shares some similarities with the old. Both the old and the new were initiated by God. How could it be otherwise? God always comes first. All our interactions with him are initiated by him. Covenant is God's idea, not ours. Both old and new are based on a love relationship. And this is what makes covenant different than a mere contract. I have a contract with the guy who comes monthly to fertilize my lawn. We have a promise to each other. He does something mysterious to my yard, and I give him some money. But I have a covenant with my husband, Tim, of 30 years. We've made promises also, but they are promises of love. I invite you even to follow along in the back of your bulletin with the scripture. We read in verse 32, they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them. Do you hear the grief in God's voice here? This is a heartbroken voice. That kind of grief is only present where great love is present. They broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them. The idea of covenant is not unique to our Judeo-Christian context. Last month, I was in Cambodia visiting EMM workers John and Debbie Coates, who have worked for decades bringing the gospel to rural Cambodia. And they explained to me that many of the people that they meet 
were dedicated as babies to ancestral spirits. Their parents entered a covenant with an ancestral spirit. And interestingly, not a spirit that they admired or loved, but a spirit that they feared. And the idea of the covenant was, prote was to protect that child from evil that the spirit might do to them. Imagine the joy of these people to learn of a God who covenants in love. Another feature that the new and old covenant share is the expectation of obedience to God's command. God promises, and the expected response of his people is to love and obey, to be a people who will reflect God's character to a watching world. And yet, while there are similarities between old and new, Jeremiah says that the new covenant will be different and better in some very significant ways. Verse 33 says, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Now, the people of Israel were familiar with the law, but they knew law to be something written on stone tablets or written on papyrus scrolls. In the new covenant, says Jeremiah, the word of God will be embedded in the minds and the hearts of God's people. And this is a huge shift, a shift from the external to the internal. And the promise is that this move will cause us, God's people, to be obedient rather than disobedient. It will work to bring about God's purposes in ways that the old covenant did not. In Jeremiah's time, the heart was understood to be less about emotions and more about the seat of our will, our intellect, our desires. And he's saying that in the new covenant, this heart of ours is going to be rewired. We might say today that it's going to be reprogrammed. It's going to get a new operating system. God deposits his spirit within us and transforms our wills and our desires so that they align with his. And we obey God's commands not just to show that we are good people, not out of fear of the consequences, but out of a genuine desire to please him as our wills and desires become conformed to his. Paul makes the same point beautifully in Romans. He says that the spirit working within us accomplishes that that the written law could not. And you may be saying, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I see all those signs of obedience in my own life. And sometimes we need encouragement that this work has really happened, signs that we have a new heart. And I see a lot of them. Signs that we have a new heart are when people give up the comfortable life they have and go somewhere hard to serve in response to God's call. Signs of a new heart are when we forgive, when wrong has been done to us. Signs of a new heart are when we care for neighbors at expense to ourselves. Signs of a new heart are when we persevere in trusting and following hard after God despite heavy losses. Verse 33 ends with this phrase, they will be my God and I will be their people. They will, yeah. This was true in the old covenant as well. This was the people of God. <laughs> he, he made the covenant to create a people for himself. But in the new covenant, there is a sense of belonging to God that is new. One of the things that he writes on our heart is you are mine. I am your God. Romans 8.16 says it this way. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we indeed are God's children. What a gift 
of the new covenant. Verse 34 highlights another change from the old to the new. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least to the greatest. This verse doesn't mean that teachers and preachers are no longer necessary. We still see those gifts operating, affirmed, needed in the church. But there's a promise here that the knowing of God is available to every believer. Not just the religious elite, not just the priest. There's a leveling of the playing field here. From the least to the greatest can know God. From the peasant to the king, from the lay person in the pew to the pastor. The Apostle John says it this way in 1 John, we have all received the anointing and we don't need someone to teach us. We all can know God. What a privilege, folks. And then in the verse 34, we finally come to the key. The key here that makes all of this possible. It says, for, for he will forgive our wickedness and remember our sins no more. It is the removal of our sins that enables us to know God, to have his law written on our hearts. And we know, as the people who heard Jeremiah did not know, (laughs) that it is Jesus who establishes the covenant, who makes this promise possible. The forgiveness, the mercy, the access to God was made possible because of his blood. That's why Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the cup and handed it to his disciples and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. It's what we are preparing to remember and celebrate as we enter Holy Week. Now, these are truths that are familiar to you, familiar to us. And I want to invite us to do three things with these today. The first is to rejoice and give thanks for the great privilege that we have to know the God of the universe personally. Those of us who have followed Jesus for many years can take this for granted, but it is no small thing. It is a wonder that we have this privilege. We rejoice and give thanks for God's faithfulness to his promises, even when we fail. Paul tells us in 2 Timothy that if we are faithless, he will remain faithful. He will not deny himself. I found these really beautiful words in this old classic book from A.W. Tozer. Some of you may be familiar with it about God's faithfulness. I can't do better than Tozer, so I'll just read them to you. Upon God's faithfulness rests our whole hope of future blessedness. Only as he is faithful will his covenant stand and his promises be honored. The hard-pressed sons and daughters of the covenant may be sure that he will never remove his loving kindness from them nor suffer his faithfulness to fail. We can rejoice and be glad that we have a covenant-keeping God, faithful despite our faithlessness. And we can rejoice and give thanks for Jesus, who makes it all possible. The second thing I want to invite you to do in response to this message is to extend the blessing. The blessing of the new covenant is not just for our own benefit. God's covenants never are. Even when God called Abraham back in Genesis 12, he says, I will bless you 
so that you will be a blessing. The covenant blessing is always meant to be extended. And it's this internalization of the covenant, the moving from the external law to the law written on our heart that makes it a missionary covenant. The message of the new covenant is meant to be preached to all peoples and incarnated in all cultures. That was impossible with the old covenant. Think of it. The old covenant required a tabernacle or a temple. It required sacrifices of animals. It required priests. There was a whole machine of religious ritual that doesn't transport very easily to other places, other contexts. But when the law is written in our minds and engraved on our hearts, it becomes very mobile. And the covenant can be contextualized and translated and adapted into every tribe, every language, every people under earth. Friends, we are surrounded by people in our families, even in your community here at Landis Homes, who long to know that it is possible to know the God of the universe, who long to have their sins forgiven. We have the great news that this is possible. We live in a world that still has more than three billion people who have not heard of the new covenant possible through Jesus. It's why I get up each morning and go to work at EMM. It's why you partner with EMM to do our small part in this great work of inviting more people to join our covenant family. And the third response I would invite us to this morning is to not lose heart and not give up. Some of you may be thinking, hmm, we're supposed to have a new heart that leads us to obedience. And I'm thinking of the person sitting beside me, and I don't see a lot of that in their life. Or maybe we're even more honest, and we look at our own heart and know that there are parts that still need God's handwriting on them. And though we confess and rejoice that Jesus has fulfilled the new covenant, the promise of it has yet to be fully realized. We continue to wrestle with sinful hearts. Not all of us is bent toward obedience. We still need our teachers and preachers. We struggle sometimes to both give and receive forgiveness. We know God, but we realize we know dimly and in part. And yet the fullness of the covenant remains a hope for us. It is a hope that is underway and is a hope that is certain to arrive fully in God's time. And so the words of Jeremiah are true for us today as well. The days are surely coming, he tells God's people. And God says to us today also, the fullness of the promise is surely coming. I encourage all of us in these two remaining weeks of Lent, as we move towards our celebration of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, I invite us to recommit ourselves to this new covenant, to submit to God's handwriting on our hearts, to allow the Holy Spirit to soften things that have become hard and bitter, to grant us revelation of God in deeper in deeper ways, to show us Jesus in, in ways that we have yet to see, to cleanse us from sins that have entangled. He is faithful to do so, friends. He longs 
to respond to prayers like that. I want to conclude by sharing something, something else from Cambodia. Um, John Coates, who I mentioned earlier, he, he sent a letter earlier this week talking about one of these precious Cambodian brothers who recently passed. Let me share it with you. He writes, an elderly man passed last week. He was about five feet tall and had a very slight build, but he was a giant in his faith. He had been a lay leader in a Buddhist temple. But after one of our health workers told him about Jesus and helped save him from tuberculosis, he decided to follow Jesus. He was strongly ridiculed by his fellow Buddhist leaders and by his relatives. But he never gave up his faith. He stayed the course. He remained faithful to the God who faithfully entered into covenant with him. May we stay the course as well. Would you join me in prayer? Lord God, we thank you that in your great love for us, you do not give up on us. We thank you for this new covenant that you made possible by the blood of your son, Jesus. And Lord, I pray for those of us for whom this has become routine. Would you give us today, even now, a fresh revelation of the wonder of it all? a fresh gratitude for your sacrifice on our behalf, a fresh awe at the privilege that it is to know you, to be the temple of your spirit. Lord, it's too much for us. What a, who are we that you should offer such wonderful gifts to us. And Lord, for those who are discouraged today, Lord, I pray for a fresh filling of your spirit, a fresh reminder of your faithfulness, a fresh invitation to renew that covenant and commitment to you. Lord, we thank you that you are ever faithful. Lord, we ask by your spirit that you would empower and enable us to be faithful as well. And Lord, we think of those in our families and those around the world who have yet to hear this wonderful news. Lord, and pray that your word would go forth. Lord, that, that there would be your covenant people in every people, in every language, in every culture, to the praise of your name. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lori. We want to close with a love song. We talked about how this new covenant is based on love. My Jesus, I love thee. Number 522. We talked about how God has said he loves us, and that is the basis for that covenant. And this song is our chance to respond in kind. God says, I love you, you are mine. This song says... My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. Not as a possession, but as a deep sense of belonging.
sounded lovely. Thank you for coming together this morning for worship. Thank you, Lori, for that message. Thank you, Charlotte, for your playing. Um, as Charlotte plays a last piece here, a final piece, Lori and I will make our way to the foyer where you can um, greet her after the prelude. Now for a sending blessing. This is a beautiful promise from Scripture. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And go in peace.